so today i am going to use a graphic plate ma let us see let us try with that how it will be effective to you let us check on one, one time so i am going to share the material screen i will share first yes so i think so we are doing previous year questions na neat previous year questions no connected and how many students eight students are there can you hear my voice clearly and is i am visible to you nana students yes sir and both uh, you can see question and answer uh, uh, my face also both no how many questions over nana already we are we were doing some questions nana so which question we are doing last time which question nana i think so question number what happened let's become by black Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Question number fourteen. I think it is over, na na. No. Fourteenth question is over, no. Yes, sir. Correct. Yes. Fourteenth question is over, na na. Let us go to fifteenth question. Yes. Here it is. I'm trying to zoom it. Okay, let me see. It is not open. Open. Wait, ma. <laughs> If it is effective, then it will be useful for us. Huh? One minute, wait, na na. So it is open with. Why this is opening like this? Are you? वेस्ट साले ओपन आउट हम नहीं ओपन आउट हम नहीं थिरू तो नहीं ओपन आउट हम नहीं थिरू तो नहीं नेटवर्क कर रहा है दिस एप डिडंट स्टार्ट Yes. See, na na. Question number fifteen, re. Question number fifteen. What they have given? A ray of light is incident at an angle of incident i on one face of a prism of angle A and emerges normally from the opposite face. If the refractive index of prism is mu, then angle of incident i is nearly equal to. Yeah. So I am drawing this. Uh, uh, Diagram. What they have given according to that I am drawing, na na. See, they have given one prism. Ah, this uh, angle of the prism is a. They have given. Okay. 
and ray of light is incident at an angle of incident i so this is normal let us take a ray is incident here incident ray with angle of incident i okay then what they are saying and emerges normally from opposite face okay here on this opposite face it is falling and it is emerging normally let us imagine this is normal means going normal like this okay ray is going like this that means this angle r2 you take this will be zero you know yes then this r1 will become what nana because it is emerging normally they said nana emerging normally normally like this this is normal means perpendicular ray going like this ray is going like this this is 90 degrees they say they are saying if this is 90 degrees this r1 should be zero so r2 should be zero so r1 should be equal to a because we know that r1 plus r2 will be equal to a r2 is zero so that's why r1 is equal to a so applying snell's law here what is that snell's law n1 sin i is it comfortable na students is it comfortable na there is a prism oh, sorry sorry there is a prism whose refracting angle is a given a degrees a ray is incident on this prism like this with the normal this angle of incident is i and it will refract no yes it will go like this and it will fall on the second surface they are saying that and emerges normally from opposite face opposite face it is emerging normally they are saying so this for this from this opposite face emerging normally so this angle will become zero now then only it will emerge normally like this so this r1 will become a now here okay this angle so apply snell's law n1 sin i sin i is equal to n2 sin r red sin r r is nothing but a so a i am applying so n1 is a na na here so 1 1 into sin i clear we want then angle of incident i we want no yes sin i is equal to n2 refractive index is mu given no yes mu into sin a what is the value of sin a here mu into sin a clear ah uh, now we want only i we know that when the angles are very small sin i will become i and sin r will become r like that so i is equal to mu into n na so option 3 is right answer okay yeah now i am going to next question see next question what they are given i'll clear this first option uh, question number 16 they are given that a concave mirror of focal length f1 is placed at a distance of d from convex lens of focal length f2 okay concave mirror of focal length f1 is placed at a distance of d from convex lens of focal length f2 a beam of light coming from infinity and falling on this convex lens concave mirror combination returns to infinity the distance d must be okay so what they are given here see they are given they have kept one concave mirror sorry yes they have kept one concave mirror on here like this okay i kept one concave mirror and they kept one convex lens concave mirror of focal length f1 is placed at a distance of d from convex lens okay here one convex lens i am placing here convex lens here okay yes 
Now the distance between these two, they have mentioned it as they mentioned this this distance as d. Okay. Now what they are saying? A beam of light coming from infinity. Okay. If the beam of light, if it is coming from infinity, what have what happened to the rays? Rays will become parallel to the lens. Okay. Where they will meet? No, no. Definitely they will meet at the focus of this lens. Okay. Yes. This distance is. Focal length of this lens. They are given the focal length convex lens of focal length is f two. Okay, this is f two. They are given. Okay, then these rays they will go no like this. Yes, they will go. Yes, they will go like this, and they will incident on the mirror like this. Okay, after reflection, they said that a beam of light coming from infinity falling on this convex lens concave mirror combination returns to infinity. If they have to go to infinity like this, if they have to go to infinity. Means the rays should retrace their path now, like this. No, yes, definitely they should retrace. So when they will retrace their path uh, on the mirror, when they are falling on the along the normal. No, yes, yes. So when the rays are falling along the normal, then only they will retrace their path. You know this property. So that means this uh, this point should be center of curvature of this car concave mirror. Then only this ray will become normal to this mirror. That means this total distance is nothing but radius of curvature of this concave lens. Na. So total distance d will become focal length of a lens that is f2. This is f2 na na plus the radius of curvature of. A, Uh, this concave mirror. Okay, yes. So distance d will become f two plus radius of curvature is two times the focal length of concave mirror. The concave mirror focal length is f one given. So f one it is. So answer should be f two plus two times of f one. Option is there. Two times of f one plus f two is there. Next minus two times of f one plus f two is there. F one plus f two is there. Minus f one plus f two is there. Okay. If you take sign convention, then this option also correct. If you take only magnitude, this answer is right. F two plus two times of f one is right. But if you take sign convention, this will be wrong. See here. If you measure the distance from here, incident rays are going like this. Incident rays are going like this. So radius of curvature you should measure like this in opposite direction. Means minus you should use here. Yes. So are you understanding why minus? So f two minus two times of f one is right answer. Or otherwise minus two times of f one plus f two is the right answer. Clear? Yeah. So option two is a perfect answer now. How would you feel, Nana? This explanation is it satisfactory? I mean, I mean, uh, how I am writing these other things? It is new for me, Nana. I think so. It is uh, uh, what to say? It is good for you, no? Than using that board, this is good. Is it okay? Just I want one reply from you. Koti, Jona, Kirti, Nikita, Priyanka, Bhumanavar. So many students are there. Shravya, Rishi. Explanation? How how could you feel, Nana? Yes, sir. Uh, Satish is Shravya. Two members they are they are responding. What about remaining? Understood? No, this explanation, Nana. Clear? Okay. So I am removing this now. I am erasing this now. No need. No, no, this one. Clear? Yeah. Now I am going to question number seventeen. See this question number seventeen, Nana. What they given? When a biconvex lens of glass having the refractive index one point four seven is dipped in a liquid, biconvex lens. You take biconvex lens means nothing but a convex lens. Okay. So yeah, not good. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Where it is? Yes, here. So they are given a biconvex lens, na na. Yes, it is a biconvex lens. The refractive index of this lens is one point four seven. Refractive index of lens means glass I take. Lens if I use L, again liquid they are given. So that's why I am using glass. It is one point four seven given. Okay. Now what they are saying? Having refractive index one point four seven is dipped in a liquid. Now it is placed in a liquid. Now we are like this. In one liquid, it is placed. So due to this, uh, what is happening? 
it acts like a plane sheet it is acting like a plane sheet plane sheet means the focal length is becoming infinity no yes when it will become focal length infinity yes we have here formula 1 by f is equal to refractive index of glass upon refractive index of surrounding medium minus 1 into 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 it is 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 clear yes this it is not changing so no need to consider this r1 r2 values doesn't change now if you keep this has to become infinity means if these two becomes equal then it will become zero means one it will become one minus one is zero then only a force focal length will become infinity means uh, refractive index of this liquid uh, means this is the surrounding medium should be equal to the glass yes this should be the right answer clear understood no any doubt nana in this point it is very easy point i think so no doubt in this no okay nana clear yes now i am going to next question next uh, next question nana question number 18 question number 18 what i given a rod of length 10 cm lies along the principal axis of a concave mirror of focal length 10 cm in such a way that it end its end closer to the pole is 20 cm away from the mirror okay the length of the image is what is the length of the image okay if you read question correctly what they given a rod of length 10 cm given one rod is there one rod you take you take one rod yes i am taking a rod yes this is a rod you imagine this length is 10 cm is given okay it is placed along the principal axis of a concave mirror of focal length 10 cm okay let's take one concave mirror concave mirror this is concave mirror and this is the principal axis you take yes okay and yes here you take the focus of this concave mirror that means i am i am showing you this focal length is 10 cm okay now what they are saying uh, now what happened 10 cm rod is placed along the principal axis how it is placed in such a way that it end close to the pole 20 cm away means uh, this end uh, which is close to the pole it is 20 cm away like this here it is s yes, got it this is a and you take this is b and you take this total length is 10 cm nana and this end which is closer to the mirror this end distance from this uh, uh, mirror mirror from measure from optic center uh, that uh, center nana here so there is 20 cm they have given okay now what they are asking this is the rod this is the rod okay so this rod definitely it will form its image okay then what is the length of the image length of the image we need to find okay so to find this length of the image one thing what you have to do is this end a this end you take this end a where it will form and this end a where it will form let us check okay yes that is the only the thing here what we need to do okay see this end a where it is focal length is 10 cm then its radius of curvature which how much nana yes its radius of curvature is this that is 20 cm means a is placed at the radius of curvature then means a image where it will form a image forms at where at, at a only that is that is 20 cm it will form here only it will form okay now now what need we need to do end b yeah i don't have space here okay i'll adjust end b end b distance how much nana end b distance is 20 plus 10 30 cm means object distance is 30 cm nana and uh, focal length you know, 20 cm sorry focal length is given in how much right? focal length is uh, sorry focal length oh, i have where is it oh, where is there there is here is there is a focal length is given as 
10 centimeter you uh, 10 centimeter given okay we know mirror formula image formula that is 1 by v minus 1 by 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f no yes and while applying we should apply sign conventions okay 1 by v we need to find no need to apply sign convention plus 1 by u u value how much day? 30 but incident rays are going like this and we should measure in opposite direction like this so it should be taken as minus 30 minus 30 is equal to 1 by focal length focal length also we should measure opposite direction to incident rays so minus 10 we should take yes so 1 by v will become minus 1 by 10 this minus 1 by 30 going that side will become plus 1 by 30 no yes yes yeah, plus into minus is minus minus going that side it will become plus so that means 1 by v 1 by v will become lcm is what enough 30 into 10 is 300 let us take I am multiplying directly 30 into minus 1 is minus 30 plus 10 into 1 is plus 10 that is minus 20 by 30 not 300 0 0 cancel 2 1s are 2 15s are means v will be equal to minus 15 centimeter now got it yeah. 1 by v is equal to minus 1 by 15 v is equal to minus 15 centimeter okay so that means this image its image will form like this like this it will form reverse no it will form uh, reverse no yes yeah. so so here it is 20 here it is 15 centimeter 15 centimeter from where from here it is 20 centimeter from here so this length how much right this length how much right 20 minus 15 you should subtract you will get 5 centimeter so 5 centimeter is the right answer got it any doubt in this any doubt nana in this point what i have explained for you any doubt nana yes it is important this type of questions uh, they may ask you this end b this is end a end b is at a 15 centimeter minus sign indicates here uh, minus is there minus sign indicates it is same side of the mirror yes 15 centimeter it is and from here total length is 20 you know from 20 we should subtract 15 so your answer will be 5 centimeter any doubt in this understood no explanation students oh no one is responding What happened? Is it audible, students? Are you, are you there or not? <laughs> understood, sir. Satesh is giving understood answer. Okay. What happened to this? Now, I am going to next question, Anna. I will erase this first. Ah. Next, what they are given, Anna? They are given, for an angle of minimum deviation of a prism to be equal to its refractive refracting angle, the prism must be made up of material whose refractive index is. Yeah. See this question, Anna, very important question, important, right? Okay, yeah, so let us check this, important, Anna, you have to listen carefully, they are given for angle of minimum deviation of a prism to be equal to refractive index. The prism must be made up of material whose refractive index is okay. Angle of minimum deviation delta refractive index n is equal to refractive index n is equal to sine of a plus delta minimum by 2 by sine a by 2. This is the formula. 
Yes, what they are given? For angle of minimum deviation delta m of a prism to be equal to refracting angle A, if these two are should be equal, then refractive index should be what? Okay. If these two are equal, sine of A plus A by 2 is what? Na? Refractive index N will become what? Na? A plus delta M also A takes. 2A by 2 means sin A. Correct? Yes. Sin A by sin A by 2 it will become. Are you understanding that given that the angle of minimum deviation is to be equal to refracting angle of a prism they said. So, refracting angle of a prism, they said. So, I am equating these two. These two, delta m is also a you take. So, a plus a is 2a. 2a by 2 is a. So, sin a upon sin a by 2 it is. Okay, yes. Sin a we can write it as 2 sin a by 2 cos a by 2 we can write. No, yes. Divided by sin a by 2 you can write. Correct? a by 2, a by 2 cancel. Sin, sin cancel. Okay. Refractive index n will be equal to 2 cos a by 2. Okay. So, this is the prism. This prism angle is a. Okay. This a maximum value and minimum values are 0 and 90 degrees. No? Yes. Take. If you take a is equal to 0, n refractive index can take cos 0 is 1. Means it can take 2. For a is equal to 0. Now, if you take a is equal to 90 degrees, then refractive index will become 2 times of cos 45. Cos 90 by 2 is cos 45. Cos 45 is 1 by root 2. Means it is root 2. That means the refractive index of a prism must lies between 2 and root 2. Option is there between, yes, here it is. It's 2 and root 2. Answer is right answer. Any doubt in this? Students understand? No. Huh. Got it, Nana? Students, any doubt in this point? What I have said? What I have said here? So, this is the formula, you know, n is equal to sine of a plus delta m by 2 upon sin a by 2. According to the question, minimum deviation of a prism must be equal to refracting angle, means delta m is equal to a, means a plus a by 2, means a, means sin a upon sin a by 2. Sin a can be written as 2 sin a by 2 cos a by 2 upon sin a by 2. Sin a by 2, sin a by 2 cancel. You get n is equal to 2 cos a by 2. Now, refractive index n value, n value, depends upon this angle A. Now, angle A, maximum 90 degrees it can have and minimum 0 degrees it can have. So, when A is equal to 0, cos 0 is 1, 1 into 2 is 2. So, refractive index should be 2. When A is equal to 90, cos 90 by 2, means cos 45, cos 45 is 1 by root 2, into 2 is A, means root 2. So, refractive index can take the value of root 2. Means, its refractive index can be between 2 and root 2. So, option 4 is a right answer. It is important question. Concept, you remember this concept. Clear? Any doubt in this point? I hope you understand. Clear or So, I am, I am going to next, next, next uh, question. Okay, now shall I go to next question? Why to waste? Ah. Question number which one over 19th over? No? I don't know. Okay. Question number 20, Nana. See a convex lens of focal length F. Here, see a convex lens of focal length F is there. The minimum distance between object and its real image. How much it is? Direct question 4F. This should be 4F, Nana. You know already. 
the minimum distance between object and image real image is 4f lens displacement method we have discussed lens displacement what is lens displacement method let us imagine this is a screen and here you have kept one of lens here like this you have kept one lens here like this okay yeah now this is the first position now here here you will get image here object is there let us imagine here object is there and this object will form a image here now again if you displace this lens to second position again you will get image here to get that image distance between object and image this is should be for f dana this is already we have discussed concept we have discussed it is important i said okay s for f you know already next i am going to next question now question number 21 na a plano convex lens fits exactly into plano concave lens okay plano convex lens i'll take first plano convex lens what happened okay what are they given plano convex lens okay plano convex lens and plano concave lens plano concave lens like this plano concave lens they are fixed exactly plano convex lens fits exactly into a plano concave lens okay yeah so how to form this you see here this is plano convex lens and this is sorry i have to erase it not going eraser i'll take exactly yes like this this Concavity, like this, exactly this fitting. Okay. And they said that their plane surfaces are parallel to each other. Yes, this plane surface and this plane surface are parallel. Yes, this plane surfaces are parallel to each other. Uh, while drawing, it has become wrong. Okay, like this. Uh, next, what they said, if the lenses are made up of different material of refractive index, this refractive index is mu one, and uh, this refractive index is mu two. If the materials are made up of different materials of refractive indices, mu one and mu two, mu one and mu two, and R is the radius of curvature, and this radius of curvature is R, and this radius of curvature is also R. Whereas this is infinity, this is also infinity. Please no, yeah. Now. The focal length of the combination is what? Okay, we need to find the focal length of this combination is what? Okay, now first and foremost thing what we need to do is first to find individual focal length. Now, individual focal length let us find. Okay, yeah, this lens focal length I will find first. Formula what? Re formula is one by f. Formula is where it is? Here it is. Yes. One by f is equal to mu minus one, n minus one into one by r one minus one by r two. One by r one minus one by r two. Okay? Yeah. So first convex lens I am taking f one is equal to this refractive index is mu one, mu one minus one into one by r one, one by r one. This surface radius is infinity minus one by r two. Okay, this object let us take here. Instant rays are going like this. Okay, clear. And radius of curvature we should measure like this. Means minus r. You know this already. Means it is equal to mu one minus one. It is zero minus of minus plus. Means mu one by r it is. Okay. Next focal length of second lens one by f two is equal to refractive index is mu two. Minus one into one by this R one. It is infinity minus one by this R two. Radius is to be measured that side. So negative only minus R. Okay. Yes. It will be equal to mu two minus one upon 
this is plus no yes this is going that side only plus so minus r clear yes now these two are combined combined means equivalent focal length will become equivalent focal length will become 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 na no, no. 1 by f1 is mu1 minus 1 by r plus 1 by f2 is mu2 minus 1 by minus r so it will become mu1 by r minus 1 minus mu2 minus 1 by r take lcm is r mu1 minus 1 minus mu2 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 cancel so what you will get the answer you will get the answer as is equal to 1 by f is equal to mu1 minus mu2 by r but you want focal length f is equal to r upon mu1 minus mu2 yes option is what see r upon mu1 minus mu2 yes fourth option is there here yes this is the right answer clear any doubt in this any doubt no no zoom out to zoom yes here Okay, this solution seen in all of you. I, um, I have to zoom out this. So I to zoom out here. This. Seen in this solution, all of you. Any doubt in this? Your time is up. Two minutes is there. And this question is also important, Nana. You must remember this type of questions because they are important. For JE students also, they are asking. <coughs> Next. Question number 22. For a normal eye, a, for a normal eye, the cornea of eye provides a converging power of 40 diopter. And least converging power of the eye lens behind the cornea is 20 diopter. Using this information, the distance between retin retina and the cornea eye lens can be estimated to be for normal eye. Normal eye means you are seeing infinite object. That is called as normal eye. Means this is your retina. Okay, wait. This is your brush head. This is your retina, Nana retina and this is your cornea let us take okay rays are parallel like this and where they will con they have to converge they have to converge on the retina this distance distance between cornea and retina this you need to find okay this is approximately focal length only because rays are for normal eye rays are parallel they should converge at the focus of this lens okay yeah so focal length we need to find okay for finding that focal length they have mentioned the cornea of the eye provides this the in front of this uh, cornea is there uh, this cornea this cornea provides power of 40 diopter and the lens lens this lens provides a power of p2 power of 20 diopter total power is nothing but p1 plus p2 you know is equal to 40 plus 20 is 60 diopter uh, okay then focal length is focal length is equal to 1 by power you know means 1 by 60 you do clear 1 by 60 in meters you will get clear yeah if you solve this you will get 1.67 centimeter you will get the answer clear yeah definitely you will get 1.67 means it is in 